Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 2011 re-release by MPC of the Barnabas Vampire Van. It's a 125 scale kit, number MPC 763. This was a re-release of uh, initially a 32 Chevy panel van to tie in with the TV show Dark Shadows. The round two rates at a skill level three for advanced builders and it has 160 pieces molded in white chrome clear and soft rubber tires it's pretty deep detailed but uh, has a simplified motor and some extra wiring would go a long way to detail that the chassis is a pretty nice replica and a great base for a rat rod now many of the suspension parts are nice quality for the rod type kits the interior is pretty simplistic and I would recommend flocking the doors with some uh, fiber. The body is quite detailed but it's a multiple piece unit and has a ton of cool gothic details. The rear doors also open and the tires are nice and soft. The coffin details are nice and it would look great as a separate uh, piece in a graveyard diorama. There's no decals for this kit and you get a mini box and an MPC sticker with it. Overall, it's about six and a half inches long, three inches wide, and three inches high. These kits are still widely available at online auction sites and at a garage sale near you. Construction starts with the motor and we'll be using Model Master liquid cement, sometimes super glue for small parts and clear or white glue for the uh, clear parts, but always remember to um, scrape off any paint or chrome plating so that the glue will adhere properly and know that you should always follow safety suggestions from the manufacturers of any of the products you see used here in the kit. So we'll assemble the block halves and paint those red with an aluminum transmission. I painted the header steel colored, the intake aluminum and the starter black. Now attach the oil pan starter intake and valve covers to the block. Assemble the blower with the front, rear and both halves of the breather and install that on the intake. Now add the belt cover into place. I wanted to add a little detail to the motor so I used some uh, wire from telephone cable and some styrene strip and I made my own distributor and coil assembly. So I'm going to install those instead of the um, one that came in the kit. I found a Chevy wiring diagram for the motor and first I drilled out the hole for the distributor shaft and installed it with super glue. Then drill out the locations on the heads and then uh, match the wires up to the diagram and cut them to fit. Slide each wire uh, onto the hole to make it look correct and super glue all the wires into place. Then add the coil to the center wire and cut it to fit sitting on the motor in front. Get the headers and install those into place on both the left and the right sides. Uh, between the pipes there will be two spark plug wires in each section so that's how the wires are placed and that's where the headers go. The tires are Tampo printed, printed soft rubber slicks in the rear and treaded smaller tires in the front. Now to give them a more road used look press and roll the tread on a flat surface on some 220 grit sandpaper and paint the four rim backs aluminum. For the rear tires, assemble the front and back rims and insert them into the tire with the tampo printing for the M&H Race Masters on the outsides of the tires. On the smaller front tires, insert a front rim and a back rim into the tires. They're not directional and the printing is the same on both sides, uh, so location isn't important. We'll assemble the front suspension to the frame for strength. Uh, Prior to a painting, uh, with the, uh, attach the leaf springs to the frame and on the axle attach the spindles by only gluing the outer face edges as they will be steerable when done. Add the brake drums and add the tie rod but don't glue it and then add the steering rod without glue and snap the steering link onto the rod. Get these pieces out for the rear suspension and we'll put those together too before we paint. Assemble the axle halves and attach the brake drums and install this unit to the frame. Install the steering pin and the engine mount to the frame and then paint the whole unit black as an entire chassis and frame unit. Here's a look at the completed front suspension and how the mechanism goes together. And also 
This is a shot of the rear suspension and how that's put together. And finally, the uh, engine mount and the steering pin shown here for reference. Get the wheel pins out and paint those aluminum and install the front tires onto the front brake drums. And note they'll be a little loose to allow them to roll and so just glue the pin. We can use similar construction for the rear tires. Paint the wheel pins aluminum and install the rear tires onto the rear brake drums. And they'll be also a little bit loose to allow them to roll so just glue the pins on. Stage these parts for the next assembly section and glue the two halves of the gas tank together uh, in the middle. Scrape off any paint uh, where the parts will attach and test fit the parts to the, um, their indicated positions. Now attach, install the motor and attach the drive shaft to the transmission simultaneously and glue the motor to the mounts. Scrape off the chrome and glue the exhaust pipes to the ends of the headers. You now have a rolling chassis upon which to build the rest of the model with a nice mean looking stance. We'll start the interior next. The steering column and pedals are flat black and the wheel is, is black with silver spokes. The seats are red. The floor underside is flat black and the top side is red too. To add some detailing to the kit I decided to flock the uh, flooring with some craft flocking. You can find that online or at craft stores. You just um, make sure the base is the uh, same color as the flocking and then you uh, paint it with some white glue and then sprinkle the flocking on, tamp it down a bit and dump off the excess and it looks like a nicely carpeted floor. Now install the pedals, shifter and column to the floor, add the wheel to the column and then install the seats into place. Next we'll prepare the body for paint. Remove any flash or blemishes that you find and you can attach some of the parts prior to any of the paintwork for uh, better coverage. So the visor, firewall and the side roof details can be installed onto the body. We'll assemble the engine compartment and fender combination next and note that there's an issue here. There are different sizes. Uh, it's kind of a serious issue for fit so we'll have to repair that prior to any of the paintwork. To fix it, I mounted some sandpaper on a flat surface and sanded the bottom of one of the taller panel to, to get them to the same level and size and height. So check your work as you sand them and once you get the proper height then you can attach them to the fenders and then use some putty and a super glue gel or whatever you'd like to do to fill the gaps there and then sand that smooth and then uh, sand the uh, uh, whole thing overall and prime it and then repeat as necessary until you have a nice smooth surface for your um, arrangement. Once all the body uh, pieces are uh, trimmed and uh, blemish free and you've repaired the fender wells you can prime the entire units uh, inside and out. So use a nice uh, etching primer and light coats not, so as not to use the, lose any of the uh, detailing. I used a base of metallic black for mine and I, I painted it on the parts that will go uh, the base for the base color. And then as you can see there's going to be uh, two tones as well uh, as this also has some brown areas to simulate the wooden coach por portions. So the black parts are the body, hood, front, clip and the dashboard. Now we'll tape the body up with a good quality vinyl tape and to get a good clean paint line and cover the uh, parts that we want to stay black. Now paint the second color on all the parts that are brown. And those are the body trim, the rear doors and the door hinge plates. Now we'll be using these pieces and you can install the center panel into the dash and then install the uh, windshield from the inside with some white glue and add the dash under the windshield. Now test fit the interior to determine where your glue points will be and scrape off any of the paint that's there and then glue the uh, body into place by sliding it, uh, the interior into the body. Now we can install the body onto the chassis uh, so test fit that and glue it into position the same way and also the front clip onto the body and note that it does not line up real well. 
using some white glue or crystal clear install the side glass uh, into place in the body. Locate the uh, accessories for the body from the kit and stage them for installation. Paint the radiator flat black and install that into the engine bay. There's no hoses that connect it to the motor so you'll have to make those up from solder if you want or spare parts. Attach the clear globes to the lanterns and super glue them to the body and super glue the door handles into place. Paint the inner area of the step flat black and install that on the body. The lanterns and step have no positive attachment points so just guess to as to where they should be located and do both sides. We'll get these parts out to assemble the back end and install the glass into the doors and add a handle to each. Then slide the door into the top hinge and super glue the bottom hinge in place to the body allowing the doors to freely open. Now assemble the tail lamps and paint the lenses stoplight red. Install the grab bars and then paint the recessed area of the step flat black and install the step. We'll install the front fenders and traction bars next. So install the traction bar from each axle to the frame. Then install the four exhaust pipes to the fenders and add a grab handle to each side. We'll finish the front end with these pieces. So assemble the headlight halves with the handles and use some white glue or crystal clear on the lenses and install those on each fender. Then assemble the spotlights and the lenses and install them on the roof corners. Add the grab bars to the roof now too. Now you can put the hood into place but don't glue it if you want to permit the motor to be displayed. And at this point the actual car is completed but there's still another sub-assembly to put together if you want to build the trailer. Now I've got to say Here's something you don't see every day and this will really make your model a display piece. The casket is Barnabas's trailer and you'll paint the coffin brown uh, with a red interior and a silver hinge and the trailer frame is black, the tires are flat black and there are feet bumpers to assemble and paint and the shoes are black, pants are flat black and the legs are pale flesh. There is also a Barnabas figure so paint the jacket flat black and the uh, pants are flat brown and the shoes are black. The body parts are light flesh with a red mouth and black eyes and gray hair. And the shirt is an off white with a black tie. Now place the figure into the coffin. You'll just have a few leftover pieces for your build. Um, there were extra hub pins and they weren't used so just put these in your parts stash. Well there you have it. Now we have to admit there's no way to sugarcoat it. The parts fit and alignment for these uh, pieces was, was poor and requires some rework. Uh, but if you have some patience and you want something absolutely different and decidedly uh, head turning for your display shelf this is the model kit. Um, they're still available and with plenty of patience and a little time and effort you could have a really nice looking display. So don't be shy. Uh, go out and buy one of these kits and put one on your shelf. Oh, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step quality model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and also at our website, RideOnReplicas.com. Thanks.